Hello guys, I am back with the third video of the course Introduction to Programming using C language. In this lecture, we are going to learn the structure of C source code that we are going to write and we will be doing it line by line. Here we are on VS Code. I have already set up my VS Code and the compiler and the necessary extension. You can just go on the YouTube and set up in your own computer. If you still not able to do it properly, write down in the comment sections and I will try to solve your problem as soon as possible. Now I am going to create a file in which I will go I will write all my C code. And for this I am giving it a name C tutorial three dot C where dot C is the extension of the C source code file. So now First of all, uh, as uh, we ha as I have told you in the earlier lectures, that all the C code should be written in a special function that is the main function. So now I am going to write my code in the main function, and for this I will create the main, and then I will put these brackets and then curly bracket. Now these brackets are used in every function that uh, we are going to define in the future class lectures these functions uh, these brackets are used uh, for the arguments that are we are going to give in the function these arguments are just the technical term for the input that we give to any particular function there is another name for this input so we also say parameters uh, arguments and parameters are uh, both the same things and all uh, these things are written inside this these brackets and uh, the curly brackets these are uh, used for identifying that this all the code should be written in this particular block uh, all that we write in main should be written in this uh, this particular uh, two curly brackets as we know c is a statically typed language so we have to uh, provide that the uh, whether this uh, this main function will return something or will not return anything for this uh, we will write it in the front of the uh, name of the function and here uh, we will write uh, void in the front of the main function void void means that we are not going to return anything from this main function and we can write it uh, here also in the arguments in the brackets that uh, we are not providing any kind of uh, arguments or parameter to the main function we don't need any uh, parameters here and uh, c is a special function so we usually don't provide any kind of the parameter in it uh, and uh, this should be uh, properly uh, every time we write our code it should be written in the main function uh, we can alter the return type here it can be integer type also that uh, we are we are returning any integer from the main function uh, although this is not a use case for us we can't just use this integer that is returning from the main function but still we can write it here as int also but uh, we will follow the void first and again speaking void means nothing in c uh, i'm not i'm not saying that Void means nothing. No, void means nothing. That means we are not going to do anything with the return type, and not we are we are not expecting something in return. And here also we are providing void. That means we are not going to expect anything in the argument and the parameter of the main function. We have successfully written our main function now. Uh, I just want to print some statements in the console, so I will write uh, write it using the printf function. Now, printf, I will write printf, and then whatever I want to print, I will it, write it in the double quotes. So I just want to write hello world, and then. I want to write another statement hello guys that's it 
now uh, what is this semicolon why are we, why are we using this uh, semicolon here this semicolon is just like the full stop uh, in the english and uh, we we just use it uh, here uh, for the for the for the declaration that we have completed our line we are not going to write it further and this is it now we are we will write in the next line or we can just write it on the same line because space doesn't matter in programming languages uh, compiler will simply ignore all the spaces it uh, the compiler detects just the semicolon and this this is it now uh, we will try to run this program so we so let's try so now here we are getting a lot of warning warning uh, what is this warning let's read it uh, implicit declaration of function printf what do you mean by implicit declaration uh, it will come uh, this type of uh, warnings come when the compiler knows that uh, this function does exist but uh, don't know how to execute it this means the compiler doesn't know what the printf do but uh, he, uh, the compiler knows that uh, it has something exists like printf for uh, for this we need to provide the proper definition uh, of the printf function which is somewhere in the header files and the libraries of c language yeah, uh, printf function we can't use it directly because it is not uh, uh, pre-built in in C so for this we will write uh, a statement in the starting hash include stdio dot h in the angular brackets now what does this line means we are just uh, uh, you can just read it uh, the it is uh, somewhere uh, uh, we can just see that we have written hash include stdio dot h and what does this stdo.h means actually this has to include this is the type of preprocessor what are preprocessors preprocessors are those uh, are those statements that are executed before the running of the whole program before the running of this main function uh, the compiler will go to this these statements and uh, will do certain things like uh, here uh, we just need to include this header file. What is this? This is standard input output header file uh, in which the uh, definition of printf function is written. For using printf, we have to write this. And remember one thing, we don't need to put a semicolon here. If we will put, it will give some error. So, uh, we just don't need to put it here and uh, always just remember this. Uh, it other than it will give us uh, error now it's time to run this program again so and this time we are getting hello world and hello guys so now here you can see that the hello world is print uh, printed and at the same exact that point uh, hello guys is started printing so we just want to ignore this thing uh, we, uh, we just uh, uh, want that uh, hello guys should be written in the next line for this we will write a special character in the printf function uh, that uh, in the string that we have in the in the double quotes that we have provided to the printf function we will write backslash here and a backslash is a special character in c language uh, or in the other language also which is uh, states that the next character will be going to be different than its appearance so i will just write n here the batch lesson and just see uh, what will be the output this time so i will run it again now we are getting uh, hello world and hello guys in different lines so now we are getting the output as we are expected uh, as we uh, as we, we were expecting so now uh, again just look look at this backslash n if we just remove the slash from here what will happen so try to run this again we are just getting n here 
so as i said backslash is used when uh, we want to specify that the next character will be different than its appearance now here the n is used for new line we are saying that after hello world we want the uh, a new line in which the other things will print will be printed we just don't need to just print other lines in uh, just uh, next to the hello world we can just put we can put this backslash n in the front of the second statement also here we are getting the same previous output and what if i put the backslash and here we will get the same output so simple now i want one more line to be printed here on the here in the console and it will be hello okay and for this again i just want a new line i'm putting backslash n and a semicolon at the last saving this file and now running this again now you can uh, just take a look at the uh, sequence of the value the uh, sequence of the statements that are written here you can just see you can see and this say that uh, all these values are printed as according to the uh, uh, the sequence that we have given in the main function first we have written hello world and the uh, and the same is printed at the first and again after that we have written hello guys then hello guys is printed on the second line and in the third line we have given hello ajay and and same in the terminal uh, hello ajay is written on the third line from here we can say that c is a procedural language that is the statements will be executed in the same order as given in the main function unless and until we write some control flow altering statements uh, which we will be learn in which we will be learning in the future classes so you don't need to worry how to write these statements how to how to change the flow of the uh, main functions uh, the execution of the program we will be doing it in the future class whenever we write a program to perform any particular task it can be a mathematical operation or printing someone's name or something else most of the time we need to store some raw data and for storing that data c provide us some data types in which we can store our 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 data which we will be using in our program the three most basic or i should say primitive data types that c has provided to us are uh, integer uh, which is short for which is written as int in short uh, and uh, a uh, float a uh, float this float is used to store a number that is in decimal uh, in fractions or we can say uh, which have a decimal point value and uh, the next data type is character which is written as char in the short these data types work as a container for storing some particular values like the integer can store the int can store the integer type values and then float can store the decimal point values and character can store any type a single character uh, it can be a b c d e f g s to anything or a numerical character 0 to 9 or it can be a special character it can be star uh, plus minus equals to it can be anything but as we know the uh, these data types work as containers so uh, it may be possible that uh, the, the data we want to store uh, will not be able to store uh, in that particular container for this we have larger data types of these uh, two data types int and float if uh, if uh, if a number if an integer is uh, larger than the uh, container of int so we will use long and if it's larger than the long also we will use long long int if a number uh, it is uh, a number is not possible to store in float then we use d 
double to store that variable to store that number and if it is not possible to store it in double also we will use long double and uh, we don't have any larger data type for the character because character is sufficient enough to store all the characters that we want to print or we want to store we can easily do it with care data type. in the next lecture we will be discussing about the size of these data types as uh, as well as the uh, uh, range uh, that we can store in these data type like uh, int uh, maybe have some well, uh, a range of uh, integers that we can store in int uh, as well as long and uh, long in long long int every uh, every of these data type have their own set of given values uh, which they can store and uh, we, in the next lecture we will be discussing how to use these data types to create our own variables and constant and how to assign values in them how to print print those values we will be discussing uh, quite deeply in the next lecture till then keep learning thank you